Good evening, everyone. Um, I live at 531 East Loveland, and my name is Elizabeth Robinson. I'm a lifelong, lifelong Loveland resident and a Grail member. I want to start us off with a prayer. God of creation, we ask for your blessing this evening. You have taught us that all of creation is your handiwork. Grant each of us as citizens and servants of our town, your spirit of love, wisdom, and grace to exercise enlightened stewardship of your gifts of abundant natural beauty. Plant in our hearts a seed of visionary courage towards a bountiful future for all. We pray this evening for our children who bear the future and are the hope of the future. May our example of wise and visionary servant leadership teach them and allow for all a joyful and expansive inheritance of the richness and beauty of your creation. We pray that right here in our community of Loveland, one generation to another, and another, and another, and another, down through the ages, will pro proclaim the wonder of your works. May you be glorified through all that you have made. Amen. And in closing, Dries is a big and successful company that builds subdivisions in many parts of the country. If Grailville land is not turned into a subdivision, Dries can and will take its plan and build something similar in another place. The citizens of Loveland, however, will lose forever something precious and beyond price, expansive green space that can never be gained back. Loveland citizens will be thankful years from now if we preserve this lovely natural place for the good of all, as did those bike trail visionaries many years ago. I ask the Loveland Planning and Zoning Commission and Loveland City Council to listen to their hearts and reject this proposed zoning change. Reject it not only on very real practical matters, but a greater vision of the intrinsic beauty and value of green space for Lovelanders into the future. Thank you. It's Janice Alvarado. <laughs> Good 80%, try. 80%. Yes, yes. And I live at 3052 Springer Avenue. I'm going to be very brief. Uh, those who have gone before me have spoken so eloquently. Um, but I, I'm just going to be brief and to the point. I, I do not have a history with Grailville. And I understand there are many, many here who are going to talk about their memories and what Grailville has meant to them and their families and their friends. I'm just a concerned citizen that wants very much to preserve our green space. And I want to protect the homes of the animals that live there. Loveland, I just read recently that Loveland is number one neighborhood in the Cincinnati area. And I'm betting that uh, Grailville has something to do with that. And sorry, I have to rely on my notes. And I understand, I, I understand money and, and how attractive that that must be, but I really think we need to take a stand to do what's right. I, I hope that, that we can make a decision that will preserve what we already have and not destroy it for posterity. 
It may be a difficult situation to do, but I think it's the right thing to do, and maybe one that will keep Loveland uh, number one neighborhood in the area. Thank you. Hello and good evening. I'm Kent Orso and I live in 100 Silas Lane. I'm on the White Pillars HOA board. I'm coming tonight with some of the concerns of our residents that live in White Pillars. Uh, we realize that White Pillars received a special exception in 2006, but Loveland was a very different place back then than it is today. Our concern is obviously the traffic. Um, we see a number of uh, vehicles today on Route 48, otherwise known as Oakland Road. Our other concern is with a lack of a sewer impact study. Uh, we realize that per the last meeting, the sewer line has to be connected with the one up on 48 because Clermont County said the one on O'Banionville Road is too small. We just want to understand if that's something that Loveland taxpayers will have to pay to fix after the subdivision has been completed and an impact study wasn't done. We're also concerned about the newest traffic study. We realize that you contracted with the firm that Dries used to do the prior study in 2021, and we just want to we realize it's not done yet, but we'd like to understand that, that we believe that there should be at least two turn lanes to get in and out of this subdivision because that entrance will be directly across from White Pillars. The other thing is, is that, you know, Lovell's a historical place, and we realize that we're just trying to maintain the look and feel of Loveland. And that's just, you know, we have 135 townhomes in our subdivision and 74 single family homes. And as you guys stated in your last minutes, there were 10 children in the townhomes that contributed to the Loveland School District. The bulk of the children there in the school district are in the 74 single family homes. I, I implore you to look at the number of homes that Drees wants to put on those 111 acres and realize that there will be another impact to the school district. Thank you for your time. I'm Lori Kiley. I live at 1221 Redswood Drive. I wrote a letter uh, so that I could have the courage to stay up here. Uh, as I sit to put my feelings about the development of the Grailville property into writing, Joni Mitchell's lyrics are stuck in my head. Don't it always seem to go that you don't know what you got till it's gone? They paved paradise and put up a parking lot. While I am a tree hugger in my soul, I'm also realistic that as humankind continues to evolve, nature will always be at risk. We must be diligent to make personal choices and choices as a community that result in the greatest legacy for those who come after us. We cannot be short-sighted. That being said, my biggest concern here today is actually about accountability. Loveland's residents elect our council to have privileged access to information on our behalf. Uh, we expect that they are making decisions holistically and with the future in mind well beyond their tenure. As accountable council members, we implore you to please not make easy compromises today that will lead to deeper issues for our community tomorrow. The full impact of every rezoning decision, every parking garage, every field that is eliminated must be considered. In our personal lives, it is irresponsible to spend beyond our means or to act now and think later. Likewise, it would be irresponsible for our council to make decisions that put Loveland's future at risk. The Grail is entitled to sell the property they cannot afford to hold. And Drees is, account uh, Drees is entitled to request an exception to maximize their profits and create a space that benefits 209 new households. Loveland Council, however, is not obligated to create new laws to make it happen. I want to go back to my previous point, encouraging holistic decision making. Here is a summary of interrelated concerns from my point of view. The Dries proposal outlines lot dimensions that equate to 0.16 acres that are 70% covered by house, at worst, and 0.27 acre lots that are 60% covered by house, at best. In contrast, Loveland's current zoning stipulates one acre per lot for new development. If Drees accepts current zoning, it's a done deal. It's within our regulations. 
The traffic studies, limited as they were, confirmed that this development would increase traffic through downtown by over 2,000 daily trips. Loveland residents know that the true impact of congestion is felt most at peak times like school commute and rush hour and all weekend long when good weather brings visitors into our bike trail uh, for hours of entertainment outside our borders. Council should avoid decisions that worsen our traffic problems before a viable solution has been identified. Tearing up Loveland Avenue to install bigger sewage pipes would be necessary and the treatment plant may or may not already be maxed out. Loveland's taxpayers require clarity and full disclosure about who would absorb the cost to resolve these concerns before any new SPD zoning exceptions are approved. More houses would result in tax income and the majority would go to our schools, but it would also add more kids and related expenses. This will overburden our situation. If the reputation of our schools degrade, then everything else in the ecosystem will start failing also. If council is contractually obligated to respond to this SPD, then the answer must be no, until we can thoughtfully consider the big picture. Um, yes, something will be built there. Let's build something that benefits the entire community. Let's build something that will make Loveland even more cherished by its citizens and inspire hope for the future. Please don't cite failed levies of the past. There's no reason to blame it for blame in any direction. Uh, those levies only indicate the expectations of the planners and voters who are not in line. <clears throat> Loveland needs to stand up for itself. We need to be bold and brave and involved in order to maintain our character and identity as a community. By not approving this SPD, our elected council would give Loveland a huge opportunity to help the Grail and Loveland find an optimal solution to the benefit of all. Thank you.